happy new moon in Virgo. Check your Venus and Meridia, Libra, and your astrological chart. All the information you're looking for is in the description box down below. Thank you so much for supporting Psychic Sid. If you like a personal reading, information is in the description box down below next to the butterfly. All right, what is the future of Libra's spiritual journey and spiritual life? Green man's bride. Okay, sacred union, commitment ceremony, and maturing into deep relationship. 38 breaking down into 111. Now, Libra, as I show you this card, Libra, I was thinking about this yesterday, that without you, you can't make money. What does that mean? Without Libra, you are incapable of socializing and being able to utilize intellectual proficiency to social harm. Without Libra, you don't connect to others because you don't even know how to connect to yourself, right? Uh, you don't know your truth. Um, Libra, what you are stepping into is because you know your truth, because you are okay with being seen so um, eccentric and different and full of life and vibrance, you stand out in this universe as an individual. And it's what makes you so special. It's what makes you so fair and so balanced and so beautiful. You represent the beauty, okay? The beauty of one's um, self and the beauty of relationships. Right? And sometimes, Libra, you think that that could even be like something that is a downfall, right? That you are capable of connecting to others and sometimes at the expense of your own needs and your own desires. And what you are stepping into is that your desires matter too. And that in connection and relationship, you do not have to sacrifice who you are and what you want in order to experience love when the love that you seek, you already have within yourself. Very beautiful. You could be getting married, signing a contract, getting into a relationship. This could be a friendship also heading into a romantic relationship, a romantic relationship reaching a whole new level as well. Congratulations, Libra. You truly do deserve it, my love, okay? So right now in your spiritual journey, spiritual life, you know, Libra represents after college. And when you are now picking a partner, why is that significant? Because once you now pick this partner in Libra, you have sex in Scorpio, right? You have sex, you experience um, the deepest psyche of knowing another person um, and parts of them that maybe don't even know about themselves and being able to then only do that because you looked at yourself. You have gone through a lot of self-development, Libra, and now you understand the number 11, which is a master number, that the way you must manifest is that if it's as above, so below, as it is, so it be as within, so without. Something also legally is going in your favor. You must create from high vibration. What does that mean? Through authenticity and truth. High vibration is not, um, oh, everything is perfect and everything is great all the time. No, high vibration is being honest, right? True. And being able to have a healthy balance of emotion and intellect, right? Emotional intelligence. I like it, Libra. I like it. This allows you to make decisions as well, okay? But how you start things is how it ends. Some of you are also going through a divorce, okay? And this is a part of your spiritual journey and spiritual life. In order to develop a new truth about yourself that you've grown into, how you start things is how it ends. So if you want something to be successful right now regarding your spiritual evolution, it must be started from a sense of authenticity and truth and the willingness to, of course, learn something new. This will also help you connect to um, brotherhood, help you connect to your community group involvement. This can be sororities, fraternities. This can also be you could be an astrologer. This is, you could work in the legal field uh, in any way, shape, or form. This is also connecting you to the global collective, the LGBTQ community. This is also connecting you to the stepchildren. All right. All right. Okay. So the green man, the wild heart of the masculine, has found his bride. The beloved was able to be both intimate and free. From their new love, true connection has grown and now they are preparing to celebrate their joining under the heavens and upon the earth. This is the heavens. 
This is the heavens. Aquarius is heaven. A little cold and esoteric knowledge there. The cosmos are in the heavens. No different than the sea. As above, so below, as it is, so it be, as it is, so it thou, right? Four, when this love is developed and grown, there comes a time to make a commitment of the heart. The kind that comes when a relationship or partnership has reached the stage where some kind of sacred ceremony will take it forward into a greater, richer place, where maturity and growth will be given fertile ground to work in and where what you create together will have foundation, roots, and solidity. This is a wedding ceremony between the green man and the bride, and this takes both into a new stage of their relationship. No longer are they fresh and green, giddy from the euphoria of new love. Their love is deeper, richer, and has taken on a strong life of its own. It is now time to sanctify this relationship by acknowledging its importance to those involved to make vows, to exchange symbols, and to join together at a deeper, more lasting level. I feel like some of you are renewing your vows. Congratulations. I'm sorry if I ruined the surprise. All right. The wild man of the forest has found his beloved. This feels like Tarzan. Tarzan and Jane, right? Like she's sort of, this is really interesting. It almost feels like that a little bit. She learned to be free. You know, she she was very um, wealthy and, you know, wealth is much different than rich because wealth means that it's been passed down from generation to generation. We're talking land, legacy, riches. Oh, you got rich last night. You got, you know, a couple of K or something like that. It's fast money. But wealthy is when it's been passed down. We have, um, you know, like land has been passed down. Realty has been passed down. Money, inheritance has been passed down. The wealth right? Generational wealth. And this almost makes me feel like when the whole purpose of going into nature between Jane and the professor, which um, she was going with at the time, was to research the nature and to look at the animals in the environment. And in the process, they saw man being one with nature. Like when Adam finally woke up in Genesis in the Bible and realized he was naked. After the, the serpent, it was, you know, obviously a Luciferian spirit stepped up and said, if you bite the apple, you will not die. You will become God yourself because now you're using your own brain. And it was crazy to many people that Tarzan was out in this wilderness without parents or whatever, but he developed family. In a, in a connection in a manner nobody believed was possible. And Venus, Taurus, is the beauty of nature. And so this is connecting you to um, your sister on some level. Taurus is your sister. And it's quite beautiful where you're allowing yourself to be free, um, awakening to who you really are, that you're a spiritual being. He was able to learn how to communicate to the apes and connect to the apes and and ooh, my ears are ringing, and become one with the apes. And it was a realization that it doesn't matter what your human body is. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. Almost like Princess and the Frog. I was watching that a couple of days ago, and you know, she kissed him trying to hope that he would turn into a prince because she, she's like, I'm trying to open up this shop, and he said he would help. You know, he was broke, he couldn't help. So she kissed him and now they're both frogs. And they're going on this mission, trying to become a human again, and realizing in the process that they fell in love with each other. And that if it meant that, if it meant that love had to be in a particular way, shape, and form, that we have to be human, or we have to be looking a particular way, then that's not love. They realized that love was the fact that they were happy together. And when they kissed at the end, then they became both human because they found real love, because they realized their worth and their value. It doesn't matter what it looks like on the outside or how it may look to other people. It doesn't make you happy is what matters, right? Quite beautiful. The wild man of the forest has found his beloved and the innocent bride is ready to become a partner and a woman. They retain their wild face selves, but they know they are ready for a long-term honoring of their love and their union. You could have been seeing 1010 a lot. You're going to be receiving a good message from Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, Sagittarius. And I also see... 
there's like a um a 12 year cycle that has ended for you wherever you were 12 years ago that is ending for you libra okay um you're also traveling okay this is also saying in order to receive blessings in your spiritual journey spiritual life you have to be willing to take risks and that does require making decisions right there may be a wedding and engagement hand fasting or commitment ceremony coming up for two people who are in love and who are ready to take the step into their future as loving wise partners joined in sacred union extension of family pondering children and growth together Contemplating the direction of a relationship and its future. When this takes place, the joy of the commitment between the lovers extends to fertility into the lands, the turning of seasons, blessings on earth, and great joy amongst the good folk, for they rejoice in love. Now the balance of masculine and feminine returns with this commitment to honor the other and to give and receive in love with honor in sacred space. Work with the sacred oil spikenard as it represents the exchange and honoring between masculine and feminine. The sacred union of partners deeply in love and devoted. The proposal to develop a lineage, kindred, ancestors of the future in a new kind of family based on loving equality and honoring physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. This is saying it doesn't matter how you were raised and how it was done. You can do things in your own way. You know, you can do things in, in in a whole new fashion. And that is growth, right? Green, this is also heart chakra energy, okay? You are finally ready for commitment. It's a spiritual connection. It's also a connection that never grounded itself into the physical reality. So it could have started off emotional and never became official in the physical reality here down on earth. Also could start off physical and now it's purely emotional. You could be at a distance from someone. Um, this is destined. It's a destined partnership. This is divine timing as well. You had you had cycles to complete. You have two of swords, knight of swords. It was cycles to complete. Yeah, hangman. The future of Libras. Spiritual journey. Spiritual life. Six of Pentacles. The journey of Libras. Spiritual journey. Spiritual life. Okay. Some of you are becoming more aware of your patterns and why you do them. Four of Wands, Venus and Aries, and the Fool, Aquarius. Okay. What you have is Two of Swords, Moon and Libra, Six of Pentacles, Moon and Taurus. You have the Knight of Swords, Taurus, Gemini, Aquarius, Libra, and the Devil, Capricorn. You have the Hangman, Pisces, and the Four of Wands, Venus and Aries. If you just moved, you were supposed to. That's what Spirit just said. You're supposed to. It's a part of your spiritual journey, spiritual life. Um, planning a wedding. Also, I see the full Aquarius. Okay. On your spiritual journey, spiritual life, I'm saying you have a blocked heart chakra, Libra. And it's due to the fact that you have dual loyalty to two people. And it makes it extremely imbalanced. The situation is based off of money, okay, with the Six of Pentacles in reverse and the Two of Swords. Like, like, there's no communication with the two of swords, very little communication, if any. And two people are stalemates. One person believes in what they believe in, the other person believes in what they believe in. And because of that, there is no resolution. There is no resolution. Okay? Um, you see, one person's head falls off. Right? This is very much so like this is not breadcrumbing. This is receiving the bare minimum. This is theft. This is not receiving child support. This is um, because you cannot love two people at once. One person will always be loved less than the other. Right? It's unfair. It's imbalanced. It's kissing ass. It's, um, if this is like a nonprofit organization or something, it's not being run authentically. 
Somebody's doing the legal activity to make money with the Knight of Swords in reverse. And they could work in the military, psychology, philosophy. Uh, they could work in legal, be a lawyer, secretary with the Knight of Swords in reverse. Okay. This could be somebody who works with money. Could be um, an astrologer for some of you. Could be a teacher. Could be somebody who um, could be even a colleague, a schoolmate, a sibling, a friend, a lover. All right. But there was a feeling of, oh, I know everything with the Knight of Swords in reverse. Also, you're very angry at someone you're getting rid of. A lot of you are getting rid of a Capricorn with the devil in reverse. There's like, um, this is also a lot of lying, uh, not, being, not being trustworthy, not even knowing what to say. And when things are said, it's very um, rude, cold. I feel like you're cursing somebody out with the Knight of Swords. It's like the the toxicity also resides in your spiritual journey, spiritual life, of you not wanting to learn something new. If you feel like you know everything, then you're not going to be able to connect to new evolutions of spirituality within yourself. You're also watching someone with the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords, you're watching someone. You're watching someone you're not talking to. Like you're watching them. You're not, there's there's little communication with whoever you're watching as the Knight of Swords. You're, you're barely communicating with them at all, if anything, okay? And there's addiction with the hangman and Pisces, but there's also a feeling of trying to busy yourself with other things to distract yourself from the fact that you really would have to get rid of one thing in your spiritual journey and spiritual life could be a belief system, person, place, or thing in order to allow energetic space for another, right? And there's a realization that you're planning something with the four of wands, Venus and Aries. You could be planning on moving, relocating. You could also be planning on homecoming with the four of wands. You could be planning a party, a wedding. Um, some of you can't afford a wedding but you're being put in a place where you have to pay for it, but you can't afford it. A lot of you are also going to be celebrating something or reuniting with someone with the Four of Wands. With the Fool, there's also a feeling of depression, feeling like you want to end all sometimes regarding your spiritual journey and spiritual life. Because with the Fool here, there is a... A fear of doing something in a way you've never done it before. Taking a risk you've never taken before. This is the risk. The risk is if you say something and you're honest with somebody, you'll lose a relationship. And the risk is, is that you'll gain the relationship um, with yourself that you are always supposed to be able to come into fruition and manifest. That is also signifying that by making energetic space, by getting rid of relationships that don't hold any value to you, you increase your acknowledgement of your own value and allow energetic space for relationships that you do value, okay? This is abusive with the Knight of Swords in reverse. It's like cursing someone out. I feel like you're getting rid of a person to make room on your spiritual journey, spiritual life. It's a Capricorn, it's a Pisces. I also see um, a Cancer, Libra, Taurus, Sagittarius, Aquarius. It's also like you're not allowed to the fool. It's like you can't travel, you can't leave something. You're very angry on some level. You're a little angry here. The masculine energy is very air, like angry. Because you want to take a risk. But it requires you getting rid of something extremely toxic. 
where money is involved and it's extremely imbalanced, it's corrupt even. It's almost like there's an addiction to holding on to your point of view and not opening up your heart to learn something new about what is fair giving and receiving. And I feel like you're also acknowledging that this is stemming from the people you're around. And that if you want to evolve and receive what it is that you are truly deserving of, right? Love, true relationship and love, you got to get rid of somebody or something. And that's just a part of it. In this situation, you don't want to make a decision, but you have to. I always said this, um, obviously I'm very unique, right? My nails are like super duper extra. I love to wear heels all the time. And I have a very unique job and my personality is just very extreme. It is on its own way and own level, right? And I always say if I'm too much, right? If I'm too much for a person, place, or a thing, then go find less. It's not my responsibility to lessen myself to make another person feel better about what they feel that they lack within themselves. And they can't stand another person to have, especially as a black woman. The, the world and the universe that we live in thrive off of black women not having any confidence. It makes them feel better about themselves. Um, it's even been said, you know, the black woman is the most hated person or creature or being on this planet and it's the truth it is on some level not only are you you know of a different ethnicity and everything derives from melody okay so you're very godly and naturally uh unique and dynamic and beautiful and graceful and having a sense of humility because of what your culture has experienced, but you're also a woman in a patriarchal society that does not enjoy the idea of women stepping into their power and knowing that they do not need a man or a woman to define their value and their worth, that they are more than enough as an individual. Because you see, when we came into this universe, it's not oh, well, I'm meant to just spend my whole life here trying to figure out my soulmate or your twin flame or whoever you feel like you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life. That's not what life is supposed to be about. It's not. Life is actually supposed to be about the relationship you develop with yourself. You're not half of anything. Do you get what I'm saying? You are a whole being of masculine and feminine energy. And rather you're a man or a woman, you're letting go of this, oh, I gotta know everything and feel like, oh, I know everything, therefore I don't need to listen to new information or learn something new. Because that's blocking your heart chakra, blocking your um, blessings, distorting your communication. That could be a speech impediment. It affects your money and gets you involved in relationships that are extremely imbalanced, and this is something you learn from your mother or the women in your family. And it has something to do with the way you learned how to value yourself. Because that was lacking, you don't think that what you feel is even worthy of being heard or cared about. Maybe, rather you're a man or a woman, maybe people have um, put you down if you're a man that could have uh, demasculinized you in some way, right? Uh, just because you are somebody who does know how to socialize and connect to other individuals. Um, if you're a woman, you could have gone through um, abusers, people who play mind games, and they think that they can come in and out of your life like a revolving door because you've allowed them to, right? Feeling like people are treating me like a doorstep because you've allowed them to do such, right? They put a little carrot in front of you like you're a horse and they, ooh, ooh, go, go, giddy, giddy, giddy up, giddy up, giddy up, moon and Taurus, right? And it's forced you to not feel. 
it's forced you to say, no, I know everything, because to even attempt to try to become better and evolve means that there is possible change, means that it takes hard work, and it also means you have to admit that you do want love, or else you wouldn't decide to try to improve as an individual. And that means you're now learning a brand new tune of loving yourself. And that it's not about let me busy myself so that I can distract myself from the things I really want in life and pretend I don't want it and I don't need it and I don't care and I don't da, 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 because I'm scared. But it's about facing the risk. This has been your reading. Libra, if you have a person or any information in the description box down below, um, it, this is forcing you into your own consciousness and realizing you are God. Like a person, your information in the description box down below, next to the butterfly. Some of you are also like uh, writers or musicians, rappers, singers, okay? Or you work with technology or group involvement. All right, I'll say Libra.